well, Imaginarium uh, kind of was, was quite uh, grandiose in in a way as well with with the movie. And then, what is your well, what was the highlight of the, of those those years after Dark Passion Play? What, was there a moment that you felt better in, again? That you felt okay? Now we're now I'm feeling now I'm in a different mind space. It felt like good to get over the crisis and do a wonderful album like Dark Passion Play mm -hmm. with Annette and then get the vehicle of spirit rolling again and seeing that the people, the fans were still there. Did you worry? I, I wasn't worried over the quality of the music that we were about to put out, but yeah, you do worry about where the people stand mm. after such a big turn of events. Right. And then when it happened again a few years later, um, it was, <laughs> it was quite the ordeal. And then Floor and Troy came along and the band started to become bigger than ever. Right. Again, kudos to all the fans, to people for having the mindset of sticking around and still being there. This, and it, you kind of alluded it to this um, in the beginning where you say you, you kind of miss those innocent early years because once everything takes off and it, it becomes a business in a way. Does that affect kind of how you experience the music and how, how you approach it? Uh, not music itself. I still do music for the exact same reasons as I did 22 years ago. But it would be naive to say that it doesn't change the dynamics of the whole monster at all. It does. Um, it's become such a big thing that you can't really control it anymore in a way that you would like to. Mm. And I sort of let go years ago. Okay. I've never been a control freak, quite the contrary. Mm. I like to give everybody a lot of room. And I believe in this thing called, what is Tasma also, I mean, in English, I have no idea. But so that everybody has their place, you know. Mm. I have no know-how or interest in managing or selling shows or anything to do with the business and the money side. Mm. So you just need to find the perfect trustworthy people to take, take care of that crap because nobody in the band wants to do that. So okay, we have that fixed. Um, I don't know how to play the guitar, so that's why we have Empo. He brings his own ideas, right. all that. So everybody has their place. And um, in that way, I'm not a control freak, control freak at all because I want these people to do their thing. Mm -hmm. But there are some things that I would like to be in control of because it's Nightwish, it's my brainchild. Sure. It's something that, that I like deeply. And then sometimes I see uh, really weird compilation albums, comp compilation album like all the best Nightwish ballads one more time with Tarja that nobody asked us. And you see it there as mm -hmm. an official release. Uh, it kind of sucks. So this is what I mean by not having control over anything right. anymore. And it's a bit tiresome. But in the, in the sense of decades then, because uh, that's, uh, that's also in a way a compilation album, but this one you took on very Decades is a whole different story. Yeah, right. yeah. I think it's, um, it was a good time to come up with a compilation album. Mm. Uh, over 20 years together, eight albums. Now we can finally make a really good chronological compilation album, right. starting from the newest to the very roots, to the first song of the first demo. Mm -hmm. Was it a collective? Did, did, did you pick the songs or did everybody kind of chime in and say, okay, I, I really like this song, this, this kind of... I picked, the songs, I picked the songs originally. Took me two days to go through all the songs and make a suggestion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't call it the best of, I don't call it the greatest hits, right. are silly terms. What does it mean, the greatest hits? I mean, we have had maybe two so-called hits in Finland ages ago. So greatest hits, so misleading. Uh, the best of, I mean, music is such a subjective thing. What do you, how do you define what's best? So I call it the most essential ones right. for a career. And yeah, I made a list of the songs, sent them to all the band members and the management, and nobody said anything mm. except that, yeah, looks really good, let's go with this. So and I guess that was it then. In, in terms of the songwriting then over the years, because you can hear the development, like you say, but um, 
How do you feel about kind of the saying, you're as good as your latest work? Is, is that true for you? Do you think that it's true? No, I think you have to look at the big picture. Maybe that applies sometimes in sports. Mm. I've heard it in like boxing circles, you are as good as your last fight. Right. But then again, it, that's not true either. You have to look at the big picture mm. and what you have achieved in the past as well. Because um, well, the way you started out, you did, uh, every every you reach milestones. So, so and, and then I suppose the bar gets higher. So in terms of the, how big Night Wish has become now, mm. what where does your Im ambition lie? Uh, it has no meaning to me how big Night Wish okay. is. Really, it really doesn't. For me, it's all about the band dynamics so that everybody has a really good time in there and that we're able to <laughs> make as good music as possible mm. with the tools and the time that we have. And uh, the nightmare would be that we come up with an album that's not what we wanted to do. Mm. That we would get the feeling that ah, oh, this could have been so much better if only. That's my biggest nightmare, not the sales or not how big this band is or should become at some mm -hmm. point. Uh, I just hope we are able to do music in the future, renew ourselves, keep it interesting for the band, for the fans, and keep this lineup till the very end. I, don't, I, I can't take another lineup change. Anymore. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> one question about this. And what makes this lineup for you so perfect? Uh, I don't take it for granted for, for once, but um, for one, it's just the past few years, the chemistry has been really good. I think you can see it on stage, you can hear it on the previous album, it's just really good at the moment. But like I said, none of us takes it for granted, you mm -hmm. have to work for it and I, I hope everybody remembers that in the upcoming tour as well, mm -hmm. and in the future. And then finally, because, uh, well, I've just talked to, to you about Auri, and you mentioned that for Nightwish, the, the kind of the, the floodgates have been opened, so, so yeah. how is the writing coming along? Is, is, is it, um, have you noticed something about where you're headed? It's still really early. All I can say is that I feel really excited, mm -hmm. super excited for the first time in months, years. Um, I have about, yeah, I have six songs now, the music, not the lyrics, but I know what these songs are about. I have the overall concept of the album in my head and I'm really excited to present it to the other members of the band at some point. Right. But I just, I feel a bit relieved also that it's back and, uh, and uh, that in the near future we're going to be able to get back together with the band and start working on these songs. Finally then, because you say you feel inspired again, uh, and it's been a year or two. So, uh, what, was, what were those two years? Did you just uh, think, well, I'm not going to write music now, I'm just going to um, focus on other things? or? In the, in, in the philosophy sense? was that uh, if the music comes, then it comes. Okay. And first came Ari, mm. and then came Nightwish. But it was never like I have to do something with music during this off year. I was concentrating on other things, like right. a lot of outdoors, a lot of socializing, traveling, just staying at home, doing nothing, all that lovely stuff. Mm. And every now and then I would try, if the music is there, it wasn't, until early 2017. All right. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.